You were concerned that I'm wondering, does it have to do with the quantity of activity, the quality, the nature of the deals changing? What was it that started to be concerned? My, my goal is to lunch that uh, the Little Boyer Playhouse is making $3 million a year on Jersey boards. You can't tell me, it, it defies all common logic, that when an artistic director sits down and you know, somewhere in the back of his head does not to make $3 million a year, that doesn't enter into his, uh, into his head. We, um, you know, we gave $200,000 to the Little Boyer Playhouse for Big River. It's now retained to get $2 million. And yes, the, the, the amount of money in, in a time of, of, of tremendous crisis and duress. By the way, I'm not minimizing the, the, uh, the situation for the not the profit field and the financial crisis that they're in. I'm not ignoring that. But um, this kind of money has to be tested. And you think the effect is what? That over time, the theaters become dependent on that and then more likely to seek these deals out? It's a pernicious effect in, in that they are going to choose work that is going to have a broader field and hopefully more commercial field, which is different than the, the original mandate of creating a protective environment in which to, in a sense, experiment and, and, and do work that is uh, more commercial and, and bolder. It, it affects the, the type of quality of the work. And is it also fair to say that, I mean, I think it's, it's prepared not to generalize because I don't think, I think these deals are as different as the, as the people engaged in them, but that,
it was uh, success was its, was its own justification. If you did well, you didn't have to uh, to explain yourself beyond that. And of course, what what started to happen is you know theaters have boards. Theaters have always had, had, had boards, but the boards started to get more more and more engaged. The, the managing directors of these theaters started to get more and more engaged in more and more areas. And what, one of the trends I think we've seen over the years in the, uh, in the resident theater movement is really the rise of the managing director as, in a way, the, 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 uh, the surrogate for the board. And in many cases, the managing director has become uh, equal to, or in some cases, even superior to the artistic direct, director of these organizations. There are examples in our hometown of St. Louis. Um, there was an um, artistic director who was replaced, and um, he was replaced by the managing director. So in a, in a, and who also became the artistic director, so they really, in effect, get away with the artistic director position altogether. The managing director ran the theater in its entirety. And often there are, you know, there are partnerships between the two, and it's the managing director the representative of the, of the, uh, the, let's say the values of the board is, um, is a center. And of course, boards, made, being made up mostly of, of, uh, of business people, they love um, metrics, and they love measurement measuring things, and they love uh, keeping track of, uh, of, of data. And if you start looking at these people, they, they can't help themselves. It's in their DNA, it's what they do. And if you look at the uh, metrics of, of um, you know, my favorite word today, success, well, what are they? What are, what, what, how do you measure uh, success in these, uh, in, in these institutions? Well, revenues, box office, audience, Number of asses in the seats. We hear that from all the time. Asses in the seats. How many people are you attracting? And of course, critical validation, preferably national. If you can get uh, a critic from uh, Time or Newsweek or the New York Times to visit your theater and write something in the national press about it, uh, that's that's fantastic. Um, and the boards have become very attuned uh, to to these, uh, these these kinds of metrics. And of course, what would be the best of all. There is one way in which you can address all of these things in one stroke, which is to take your show to Broadway. And I saw this very good point about the St. Louis Diane Knight Sherry hometown, as I said, my wife Debbie. And when I was a kid, uh, early 60s, they basically won theater. There was a mini opera, which was more or less a summer stock theater with uh, you know, the uh, version of Broadway shows. And by the time uh, you were here, it was late, I guess I couldn't say exactly when, but <laughs> there were, there were, um, there were few more theaters while well, there was a little movement. And I, a few years ago, went back to St. Louis to participate in the Kevin Kwan Awards, and there were more than 20 uh, professional resident companies in that, in that city. That's a big thing, essentially from nothing to a great number of, of permanent professional resident, resident companies. And uh, there are two questions about, uh, about this. One is how, and the other is why. The how is pretty easy to, uh, to, to address. What happened was, suddenly, they come into the board. There was plenty of the board for the year, so we waited for them to get started. We didn't need a fund of these foundations and, and, uh, and, and the NEA. Uh, the funding also is local. So it was, um, uh, individual corporations, global foundations, uh, national foundations as well, and more and more there are developed out of support for these students. You have to have audiences. So that's how it is to happen. The why of how it happens, the why, the why of it is, is a more challenging question. On the one hand, these students provided the other way to have a show for their audiences, for their audiences, for people to enjoy it. But I think there was a second, and this is an important aspect of this, which is that they provide an alternative to the commercial fare that you would see on Broadway or in the, or in the, uh, in the commercial view. Uh, if you look at the founders of these, of the original great institutional theaters, resident theaters, Tyrone Duffley, more famous, they feel half the television, right, right here at a research in, in, in Washington. Uh, my name was Bob Tom Lucy at the Yale Rep, Gordon Davidson in Los Angeles. They were essentially working outside one